Uh, my name is Rich Quotamine. Currently, I am a uh, senior lead GIS analyst for the city of Philadelphia's Department of Public Property, which is a really fancy way of saying I make maps on computers. Uh, my background actually, academically, uh, 25 years ago, I was a miserable management major at the University of Buffalo. And one of my friends said to me, Rich, why don't you become a geographer? It's everything you like in terms of the numbers and the business side. It's an economic geography program, but nothing of the stuff you hate like accounting and calculus and all these other things that made me miserable. So uh, one night after uh, finally agreeing to test out Economic Geography 112, which was run by professor, or taught by Professor Barry Letnick, I fell in love with it, immediately switched majors, and my, my GPA went from somewhere near dumpster fire level to, uh, you know, I climbed it back over a 3.0, where it had been really not good. And ever since then, those 25 years, I have been a geographer ever since educationally, and even uh, some brief uh, time before I entered government service, I was in, uh, in private sector. And even then, what did they need me for? A lot of geographic use. So I've been a geographer ever since. The city hired me two years ago specifically to uh, bring to fruition a couple of projects that are GIS and geographically intensive. Uh, the first part that we had is we had an asset management database that was the result of a study done in 2012. Uh, the asset management database sort of existed in an Excel world and then it was existed as a geo database, but no one knew quite what to do with it. It existed, but no one understood what you could do with the analysis. And I had worked in asset management GIS for the Department, New York State Department of Transportation years earlier. So knowing what to do with it, what kind of analyses you could bring it up, how much are we spending here? How much are we, uh, in terms of people, or in terms of energy cost, or in terms of work orders or capital, what are we spending on certain places? Why are we spending geographically what should be the same and all of a sudden one building's 100,000 and another building's 50,000? Why is all that occurring? They, they had a couple of uh, applications that they custom developed that tracked those changes, but no one knew what to do with, all right, we have this data, now what do we do with it? And they passed it from person to person and no one really could. Uh, so I was hired to make sense of that data and turn this large chunk of how much money are we spending on this into, oh, let's make this an informed environment. So now I, I am responsible for the application management of those but also the downstream use of the results. So I serve on climate smart committees and 5G rollout and looking at uh, legal, uh, for example, legal settlements that the city has had to make because of infrastructural uh, issues, trip and fall, but also moving vehicle accidents with city, uh, with city vehicles. All of those are geographic analyses that I am now responsible for both maintaining the asset structure and then providing analysis to other uh, units within the city. And I ask every student and every young professional, if you could map only one thing all day, what would you map? And I get a variety of answers and I answer always, trains. I love trains and buses and infrastructure and things that go vroom. I could sit at a train station and monitor the trains and come up with whatever analyses you want to do, frequency, headways, all that. So I love asset infrastructure and analysis. And I started doing this originally for the Department of Labor 15 years ago, New York State Department of Labor, in their transportation, warehousing, utilities, occupations that are served by those industries. And that grew into a, I got promoted to a role as a transportation analyst in public transit for the New York State Department of Transportation and I got to map where buses go and trains go and all that, which is just exciting to me. And maybe no one else finds it exciting, but I do. So, And then fast forward the last couple of years when we needed to do asset management, how do we spend on our transportation assets? How, do we, how does the city spend money on everything when you look at Philadelphia? Trains, planes, uh, shipping, all of that in a very concentrated area. Philadelphia is only 154 square miles. But when you think about all of the goods and the people and the trains and buses and planes that all are in the city line, it's a really massive transportation interchange. And that is thrilling. <laughs> I like to do that.
Yeah, I like to say that it's infrastructure GIS. And the biggest challenge to Philadelphia is also its biggest asset. It's old. And because it's old, we're in the process of rebuilding a lot of, of its infrastructure. Sewer, water, uh, trains. I mean, you know, we've got subway systems that are 100 odd years old. Uh, some of it are elevated, some of it are underneath uh, the ground. You've got a lot of this new desire, and because the city is growing again, a lot of people want to use this infrastructure. When you're a redeveloping city, I look at it as redeveloping GIS, redeveloping the urban landscape, we're actually building a rail line extension for the first time in something like 60 years where we're building the outbound to King of Prussia because the density of, of an office environment is there. So you look at your destinations as well as your origins. You look at what are your more dense neighborhoods, and sure, that's one way to increase your bus service, but also look at some of your other induced uh, transit and other uh, infrastructure users. For example, you might have a very high immigrant populace, as does Philadelphia, and because many of the people in immigrant families do not drive yet, they're heavy users of public transportation, so you react to putting certain services for your recent immigrant population. You look at put to putting particular services, uh, one of the things we use for fire modeling if, as an example, which we have a geographic tool to look at using geostatistical analysis, uh, we have a lot of fire calls near where there are new buildings. So that also, we have not only do we have to increase our fire response there, but maybe we should have another uh, closer look with our inspections during uh, uh, buildings. Because a lot of times what we found out is contractors sometimes cut corners to get something built more quickly. And so that becomes an a codes enforcement issue. All of these things we used to think of as separate. I would say old urbanism looks at separate cause and effect. New urbanism, particularly geographically integrated urbanism, looks at all of these in concert. Does geographically weighted regression that fire calls are not separate from licenses and inspections are not separate from sewer water connections.